Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to stop being clingy, how to stop being needy and codependent. So if you're someone that has a wound of abandonment, for instance, that, you know, you freak out if your partner doesn't text you for a while or, you know, they leave for a trip, let's say, you know, and they don't contact you for a certain amount of time or they go to sleep um, without calling you, even though you usually call before bed, you know, it's pretty clear that you have an insecure attachment style. So what does that mean? It means that in your childhood, you probably had an unpredictable or unavailable parent. So to explain like the basis of attachment theory, right? If you have a parent that is loving and supportive and it's present and is consistent and the child is playing around them, you know, they will have the confidence to explore the world, to go, you know, see and discover new places because they know they have that secure center, that secure base that they can always come back to. They have that safety net. So they dis they create, you know, that self-esteem and confidence. They develop it. But when a parent is unavailable, inconsistent, you know, maybe the parent leaves and the child doesn't know where the parent is, you know, then the child becomes extremely anxious. They will probably get angry. They will become really anxious. And when the parent gets back, they'll get really angry with the parent and they might become distant because they're upset they left, you know, you know, and this can actually manifest in adult relationships as well. So a lot of times, so for instance, if a woman has a husband or a partner that um, doesn't call, you know, for a few hours while he's working, let's say. The moment he calls, she's not going to be like, oh, I'm so relieved and happy that you called. I really missed you. How's your day? She's going to be like pissed and annoyed. And she's going to be like, maybe not answer the phone. Uh, she's not going to call him, you know, because now she's upset. So all these things actually come from your childhood because you didn't develop a secure attachment style. So now, you know, you are not comfortable with being independent and exploring the world because you don't feel safe. You know, the child that doesn't have a predictable, loving, secure parent is not going to feel safe to go and explore and discover. It's probably going to stay next to the parent or the other caretaker or whoever is present and attach to them, cling to them because they don't feel safe enough. You know, they don't have that safety net, the safe base to turn to and they don't feel like, oh, I can just go and explore. So for instance, if in your adult life, you don't feel comfortable with doing things independently by yourself, you know, maybe go to another country or get a new job or make decisions by yourself, it's a pretty clear sign that you do have an insecure attachment style. So an assumption that a lot of people make is if that person is so independent from me, they make plans by themselves, you know, without consulting me. They go to sleep without calling first, you know. If they're able to do this, it means they don't love me. If my partner isn't as clingy and dependent as I am, it means they don't love me. When in reality, your partner may be received a secure attachment from their parent, you know, so even if they have distance between you two, they still know that you love them and that they love you and they don't have that wound of abandonment that comes up and manifests. But for you, if your partner isn't present for a certain amount of time, different people have different thresholds of tolerance, then your instant thought is they don't care. They don't love me. You have to understand that not everyone is like you, that distance, you know, not being able to see your partner, to be in contact with your partner or them going to sleep without calling you or anything like that doesn't mean 
they don't love you or care about you. It means that they're secure enough in the relationship that they don't need to be in constant contact. They don't need that predictability that you need in order to feel safe and loved. So this is important to understand, first of all. Then what you could ask from your partner, you know, that would help you besides finding a partner that is emotionally intelligent and secure and it's willing to give you, you know, what you need and listen to you. Because what happens a lot of times is people that have this wound of abandonment and are clingy and needy, they usually go for unavailable people that touch their wounds and remind them of their parents. So it actually starts with choosing the right person. But if it is the right person, then asking them to create routines, you know, to create predictable routines, to check in, to validate, you know, to reassure you. You can be really honest with them and tell them, look, babe, I need you to call me before we go to sleep or to check in in the morning, in the um if afternoon and in the evening, you know? And I need that predictability because that's what people with an insecure attachment style need. It's predictability. You know, people with an abandonment wound, they need to know you're not going to leave them. They need to see consistency and predictability. Now, what happens a lot of the times and what I was saying earlier is that these people actually choose extremely unpredictable people. Those are the people that cause the most anxiety in you, which you confuse with butterflies and which you confuse with attraction and sexual chemistry. When someone is predictable, you call them boring and it happens so many times you know in my coaching sessions someone is like you know oh I only get in relationships that trigger this wound of abandonment but they only get with people that are extremely inconsistent or unavailable either emotionally or physically even you know and when they find someone that actually is attracted to them and wants to be with them and is consistent and predictable they're like oh that person's boring you need to start making better conscious choices. You actually need to choose people that you're not as attracted to, but that you know are healthy for you. Attraction can grow in time. Love can grow in time. Obviously, there needs to be a certain level and baseline of attraction, but don't go for the people that are most unpredictable. If you have a partner that is emotionally intelligent and secure, then you are better able to heal this wound because they will give you that consistency and predictability that you need. And even if one time, let's say, I don't know, something happens, they forget to call you or they don't call for a couple of hours because they're busy, but they really are busy. It's not just an excuse. Then you can still have that trust that even if maybe you get triggered, but you're like, I know they're not cheating on me or they're not, uh, their love for me didn't stop or they're not going to break up with me if they did this, you know, or they don't love me or they don't care about me. It's probably because they're busy, because you got that predictable behavior throughout the relationship. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you'd like to ask me any personalized questions and get a video response, then you can join my Patreon community, which I linked in the description. Lots of love.